Many are called, but few are chosen. And what I find interesting throughout this parable is that some were killed, all were invited, some were killed as they spurned the invitation, as they chose to not go to the wedding, as they chose to refuse the invitation. Some mistreated the, the servants. Some didn't show up, bother to show up. And of those who did bother to show up, not all were accepted. The one who did not show up appropriately was not accepted. And so there are many facets to this parable. And it starts with a choice. And the reason that we have come into the house of God today, that we have gathered as the house of God today, is because we made a choice. A verse that we're very familiar with in Joshua chapter 24, starting in verse 14. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him with sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day who you will serve, whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river, or the gods the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. We chose a path. We chose to be here today. Like Joshua said, choose who you will serve. And at one point in your life, whether it was this morning when you woke up or whether it was years ago when, when you were baptized, at some point you chose to come here. At some point you chose to worship God you made a choice, a path that you wanted to follow. And it's because of that path that you came here today. In worshiping God, let's turn to, to Psalm chapter 27. In worshiping God, we have expectation. Not only do we have expectation of, of what He is going to do for us and provide for us being the bearer of the feast, the fatted calf that was slaughtered, the preparations that were made for that, for that feast. The invitation was, was not just to show up. It was to show up and to, to join in a party, in, in a feast. We have expectation when we get there. God has expectation of us as well. Let's read Psalm chapter 27. The Lord is the light of my salvation, and whom shall I, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, that I, will dwell, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For he, shall hide, for he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock, and now my head will be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I see? <coughs> Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witness have arisen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. But what do the words wait for the Lord mean? Some people in every congregation and every body that gathers together, some people are not as young as others. And you've been waiting for a long time. You've been coming up to the house of the Lord and you have been seeking His face and you have been studying His Word and you have been presenting yourself Time after time after time. 
And it's a long time. Even, even this wisp of a life, as it's described for us, is a long time sometimes. And one of the reasons that it, it is so long is because there are enemies. There are things that stand in the way. And by enemies, there are things that get in the way and make it hard to serve God. What's noted and easy to note and easy to forget is that it never says that there are not enemies. It never says anywhere in the Bible that everything just moves out of the way and makes it easy for you to serve God. Not, it, it, there is no place where it said everything just opens up and that it's easy to come to the house of the Lord to worship Him. It's easy to stay in, in perfect in His sight and walk with Him perfect in His sight. The enemies are always there. In so many of the Psalms, the enemies are just there. And they are actively working against the life that you're trying to lead. The righteous life that you're trying to lead. And so, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. That's an admonishment. That's a thumbs up. That's a keep going. The mutual expectation. The Lord is my salvation. I expect that. God will save me. He will hide me in the shelter. He will hide me in His shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of His tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. Verse 5. Verse 8. You have said, seek my face. Something that is required of us. And in seeking your face, we ask in verse 11 that you, O Lord, teach us your way. And so in waiting for the Lord... Psalm 122, the first verse says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go up to the house of the Lord. Do we maintain that happiness? Do we maintain that pleasure in being glad that we get to come together, that we get to worship God? Psalm 95 starts with, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a King above all gods. In His hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are His also. There, the sea is His, for He made it. And His hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God. We are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. It's just the attitude that we have when we come together. Did we walk in here today to praise God? Let us come and worship and bow down. Did we enter in, into His praise with this attitude? As is our admonishment or encouragement. When you were getting ready this morning, did you think or was it the attitude of your heart? Maybe not the active thought process of your brain, but the attitude of your heart. Let's go sing to the Lord. We get to go praise God this morning together with other people. Is that the attitude we're going to have tonight when our numbers are less than half of what they are this morning? That's my fight. Is it yours? Or is it that you gathered together this morning for, any other re uh, for another reason? Because Jesus had an issue with that. An other, an other reason. When Jesus came to the temple, He found those who had gathered for other reasons than to come to the house of the Lord and to worship Him. In John 2.14, in, in the temple He found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers were sitting there and they do it under the guise of, I need to help you with your sacrifice. I need to help you have a good time while you're here. I need to help you with, with your righteousness. So let me sell you your, your, uh, your penance, your, uh, your sacrifice for you. Let me help you with that. Did you come here today with a different attitude or think that the conversation beyond fellowship was the better reason for gathering here today? Or that by keeping your pew warm, you are going to get to heaven faster or more assuredly? Let's don't forget... There's a difference in the temple in this building and the temple that we have to worship in now. This building is not the temple that we have to worship God with. At the end of a point in the sixth chapter of 1 Corinthians, 
the segment closes out in verse 19, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You are bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. And the easy thought here would be, well, depending on how well I dressed this morning is how well I worship God because that's how, that's how I keep the temple, by glorifying God with ourselves, not with the body, the skin, the rag of flesh and bone that I have to deal with as my soul. But the way that I keep my heart, my mind, my soul is how I glorify God. And that soul is bought with a price. That soul has been purchased through the sacrifice of Jesus the Christ. Of those mutual expectations that we read of in Psalm chapter 27, we understand and expect and God has said that he will provide. John chapter 14, starting in verse 1, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. We are working for God, with God, and to God in gathering here in his name. You know where I'm going, was his statement. And Thomas had a question. He was a little uncertain. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you've seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it's enough. Jesus said to him, how long have I been with you? Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? It's so obvious what it is that we're supposed to do. It's so obvious that we're supposed to serve God. The evidences are all around us. The evidence that this earth is created, that it works the way it does. If you want to go out into outer space and look in, that it's the perfect distance from the sun. That its atmosphere is composed the way it's composed so that it is the only place that we know of in the entire universe that sustains life. Or if you want to go in all the way down to the atoms and the fact that there are perfect atoms that form together and the bonds that are made chemically grow into bigger things and form larger organisms and, and compounds and you have rocks and trees and beings and flesh and bone and the way that bodies work together so that life can be sustained and the only thing that we can't explain is why life is in the first place that is god's as we wait for the lord we have times where we're just uncertain thomas i don't understand it philip uh, and they were right there with him Matthew chapter 14. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side and he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain to pray by, him, to, by himself to pray. And evening came, he was alone. He was there alone, but the boat by this time was a long way from land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And it was the fourth watch of the night he came to them, walking on the sea. But his disciples saw him walking on the sea and they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand, took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? while we work and try our best to praise God and to serve Him. It is understandable that we will have uncertain times. Not only did Philip and James have issue with this as Jesus said who He was, but here Peter, in the same instant, in the same moment, has both certainty and uncertainty. Tell me to come to you, and I'm coming. And he goes... And as soon as he gets out of the boat, or as soon as the wave comes up, it's not good enough anymore. There is an uncertainty. And still our encouragement in Psalm 27. Wait for the Lord. Be strong 
and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. What we can be certain of is that God waits for us. And He waited for us. And He waited to send His Son until prophecy could be made, time could be spent, and in the fullness of time, sacrifice would be perfect. In John 3, 16, where some people try to shy away because of other people's misunderstanding, let us read boldly. Because this is the fulfillment of prophecy and the salvation that we have. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than light because their works were evil. If you're waiting for the Lord, your work, are your works evil? Probably not. That would be counterintuitive. That would be against what all of Psalm 27 was talking about us doing. So then we're the light. But if you read further on, light has no company with darkness. And so certainty may slip. What can we be certain of? We understood certainly that God created us. We understand certainly that God gave us salvation. Through His Son that we, we just read. We understand certainly, just like Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, that He has the power to save us and we can do all things through Him. We can understand through examples that He left of His closest, of those who knew the most about Jesus, that not only will life be hard, sometimes it will be so difficult that we do not win on our own. And we, we cannot win on our own. We understand that God is certain and He has held Himself and held, held out His hand and held out His salvation and waits for us. We understand that He has offered us salvation, that we have been invited to join Him in heaven just as the feast that was held, just as people were invited to that feast. We understand we're not the, those that love darkness rather than light, so we're not the ones that murdered the servants who came and said the feast is ready. That wouldn't be us. We understand that as the invitation comes, we weren't the first to receive it, so we would be the latter. And that we would come to the feast because we want to worship God. That's why we're here today together. So we go to the wedding feast. And we understand that in going to the wedding feast or in accepting the salvation that He has offered, that we cannot come as we are. Because for the poor fellow... In verse 12, coming as he was, Matthew chapter 22, verse 12, coming as he was, was not good enough. We must have the wedding garment. It's not enough that we were invited to the feast. It's not enough that the feast is there and it's ready. It's not enough that we showed up. We have to show up to the salvation of God on judgment day in a wedding garment. We have to show up prepared for what is going on around us. And so how will we show up for Judgment Day? There are so many people in this world that are going to show up because God offered them salvation. He loved the world so much He gave His Son to die for us. He threw the feast. We'll just show up. How could He turn us away? Was He going to let the meat spoil? It wasn't good enough for the guy in verse 12. You have to show up in a wedding garment. Many are called... All are called. All of those who do not love the light, all are called. Only few are chosen. Only the ones who show up in the wedding garment. Only those who accept the salvation of God, enter into a covenant relationship with Him in baptism, as is commanded, and put on that pure white robe that we read of in Revelation. All, many are called, but few are chosen. 